So this time around we want to talk a little bit about nested routing, and it's going to take us a while to get there, probably a couple of lectures, but let's get started. So this component, movies, shows up here when I click on movies in my application. And what I want to do is display a list of movies. And as I said last time, ultimately that list of movies will come from our go back end as a JSON file. So I need to simulate getting a JSON file or getting something that can be converted into something React can use in this lecture. So we're going to do that by going back to our code. And the first thing I'm going to do is import fragment because I know I'm going to need that in a minute. So fragment. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up some state. And for this state, I only care that it's available in this component, because this is the only place I'm going to use it right now. So I will say, and we might change that later, but right now I'm just going to put it here. I'll say state is equal to, and I'll have a key called movies, and its value will be empty to start with. Okay. Now, down here in this render function, I'm going to return this, and I'm going to make this a little bit easier by wrapping this in parentheses, like that, just to give it a little more cosmetic appeal. And I'm going to wrap everything in a fragment. So, fragment, and my closing fragment tag gets moved down to the bottom, like that. Okay, let me format this. There. Now, inside of this, I'm actually going to, like we did in the last section, put a UL in here, an opening UL tag and a closing UL tag, and I'll just use the map function to go over the movies key in my state. So this dot state dot movies dot map, and then I will use the variable m to keep track of the current iteration, and use my arrow functionality and open a parentheses. And inside of this, I'll just have li key equals and open and closing curly braces. And I'm going to call m.id, which we'll generate in a moment. So don't worry about that. Then we'll put the name of the movie, which will just be m.title. Okay. Now I need to populate my state, my, my movies key in the state variable somewhere. And I can do that really easily. I mean, I have an empty one up here, so this will just generate, generate an empty UL tag, an opening and a closing UL tag with no LIs in between. But I actually want to put a few movies in there. So what I'm going to do is, after I declare this, I'm going to call a new function, something that's available to us and something that's part of the React lifecycle. If you recall in the last application we built, you had to click on a button to fetch some content to display it on the screen. And of course, I don't want users to have to, and let me go back to my web browser, I don't want them to have to click on movies to say, choose a movie, then click on a button to get the list of movies, then click on the movie they want. That's an extra step. When I click movies, I want the full list displayed here. So how am I going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by using a function that's related to React lifecycle, which I'll talk about in a moment. But let's write it first. The function is called component did mount, like that. Okay, and it takes no arguments. And this will get executed after the component is rendered to the screen. And that's part of the React lifecycle that we need to be aware of. And I'll show you a helpful diagram and give you a link to it in a, a little bit. But first of all, let's just, right here is where I would say, the component did mount, now go to a remote server, get the list of movies, and populate it in the state. But we're gonna fake that by just saying this dot set state, And we'll just write some movies in here. The key is movies. Try that again. Movies. And it's equal to, and I'll just put three movies in here. So I'll put in one with an ID of one. The title will be, say, some movie. The Shawshank Redemption. I actually have a list of them next to me. And its runtime is 142 minutes. Okay, so there's my first one. And now I'll just duplicate this twice and change everything. So make this ID 2, make this ID 3, and instead of the Shawshank Redemption, we'll make it the Godfather, which has a runtime of, it's a long movie, 175 minutes. And finally, the last one will be The Dark Knight, just enough to give us some data. The Dark Knight, which has a runtime of 153 minutes. Okay, so I've now set this up. So really, when you think about it, what's going to happen here, we're going to click on from our 
where is it here? From our app.js, the us users will click on this link right here to go to movies, which gets translated to either the slash movies if we're using the browser router or the one with the hashtag in it if we're using, uh, uh, as we are, hash router. And that takes them, that actually renders this movies component. When this component renders, after it's mounted, then we set this variable in the state called uh, the key in the, the state variable called movies and populate it with this information and then it just writes this information to the screen. So if I go back to my web browser right now, you can see it's already working. I'll go to home and I go to movies and there it is. It lists all three movies. So what we'll do in the next lecture, and I'll talk a little bit more about the life cycle before I end this, but what we'll do in the next lecture is actually make these active links. And that's where nested routing comes into play. But right now, and I'll talk more about this as we go on through the course, this is a really helpful chart that shows you the life cycle of a React application. So we have the mounting, we have the updating, and we have the unmounting. And really, when you look at what we're doing here, we actually call the constructor first, then we render it, and then we set the state, and we actually update the DOMs and refs at this point. So this, this function right here, component did mount, is called at this step in the mounting phase. When we update things, there's the order that things take place from top to bottom, and when we unmount them, we only have to worry about this. Now, if you work in React a lot in the future, you probably should check this little box that says show less common life cycles. That just gives you a bit more detail on things that you normally don't run into when working with a React application, and we won't in this course. But uh, if you're doing a deep dive or working in a really sophisticated uh, React application, at some point this part of the chart will be of value to you. All right, so for right now, the only thing I'm interested in is when does the component did mount fire? And it fires after the constructor, after everything is rendered, after React updates the DOM and its references to the DOM, then we know the component is available. So at that point, it is safe to write our, our information that we just hard-coded, those three movies. It's safe to write that to the browser window. Okay? All right, in the next lecture, we'll start actually getting some nested routing working by making these active links.